Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I'm Celestial and you're welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. This is the second part of a prophecy that the Lord had been building up to, I think just a few weeks ago. The prophecy is dated June 28, and this prophecy is directly related to the one that you would have watched just a few moments ago. It is called The Secret Lives of Children. This is a graphic prophecy, even more graphic than the one before. Please exercise caution if you are in the habit of watching these prophecy videos with your underage children. This prophecy speaks to children of the age that can do these types of things, even children that are in their lower 20s who may still be living at home or those who have freshly moved out on their own for work or further education. This prophecy was dictated to me by the Lord. So basically he read it out to me or spoke it to me and I wrote it as he said it. I was seeing visions throughout and I will, where necessary, outline and describe those visions. The boys are taking pills and are drug addicts. They are functional rapists. They force girls to have sex to the point where girls are afraid of them. Girls are afraid of certain boys and their reputation. This is at the middle school and the high school level, not yet at the elementary level. The boys smoke drugs, hard stuff that they get from dealers. They know where to get them. They're drug addicts. They mix pills and prescription drugs to cover up their addictions. They know how to balance drugs to keep themselves looking normal and undetectable. Prescription drugs mixed with weed can mimic a form of calm. They can also balance out hard drugs. So God is saying here that males in particular are on a ton of prescription medication. For me, the only one I know is Adderall, that is the only one, please excuse the noise, that is the only one that I know of, but I'm, sh I'm sure that there are a ton. Many of these prescription drugs that parents have put their children on at a, at a young age, they are addictive and they're very hard for the children to wean off of. But God is here talking about children who are actually dealing pills. So I mentioned this young German boy that had an empire. And at the time I was writing this prophecy in June, I had no idea what God was talking about when he was talking about, for instance, the type of boy who builds an illegal business, an illegal empire in his parents' home and is so meticulous with it that he can actually keep his own books. He can keep track of the money he's spending and making. He can keep track of all that he's doing. And his parents have no idea that they have a minor in the house doing this. These are boys who are drug addicts for the high. These are boys who are drug addicts to feed the habit that they've already picked up in their younger years. These are boys who are, they feel very much more powerful when they're on drugs. And as a result, they are very dangerous to their peers, especially their female peers. God says that girls are being raped a lot. And I will go into that in this prophecy. And girls are also being pressured to have sex to the point that these boys have raped, um, worked up an impressive rape count. Their reputations go ahead of them. The girls know who are dangerous and they are afraid of those boys, especially because a lot of these boys are protected by money. If they're not protected by money, parents' money, then they're protected by peers, meaning that they're popular or they're handsome or they're a combination of both. And so their peers know the crimes that they commit but will not give them up. Sometimes these boys are even protected because of threats. Their father is the police chief and the boy can easily tell a witness to his crime. Even the girl that he has raped, you talk. I'll kill you and my father can make it go away. Boys who rape girls. Before I go on, the last thing is that the Lord says that these children are basically cocktail mixers of drugs. They know how to take things like cocaine and then balance it out maybe with weed or balancing it, balance it out with some other type of drug or narcotic that can bring down the sharp edge of the hard drugs. And so 
This is a lot of your young male interns out there in high pressure financial markets, high pressure real estate markets. These people that are showing you your house, these people that are make, handling your investments, a lot of them are carrying serious addictions in their young their young 20s, their upper 20s, their young 30s, maybe even early, even middle 30s, because he's still talking about people who are children. When God says children, God sees all of us, even the gray haired who watch this channel, God sees us as children. So uh, that is the first part. Next, boys who rape girls, they seduce girls to make the girls trust them. They even offer themselves as boyfriends to make it legitimate. And then they apply nonstop mental and physical pressure to the girl until she caves into sex or they create compromising situations and then tell her later, but you wanted it. A lot of girls have lost their virginity, and even if they weren't virgins, a lot of girl ha girls have had sex taken from them because the girls of this generation do not have the wisdom to know how to sequester themselves from young men. Sequestering yourself means knowing how to keep an adequate distance of separation between you and a male that you are not married to. You're not married. You're not meant to be opening your legs to anyone. I will be blunt because the sins and crimes of these children are equally blunt. I need the viewers of this channel to understand. If you had a clue of what I look at, many of you would think twice before complaining and going on and on about you use this picture. I felt so abused. Think of my eyes and think of my female single personhood. The fact that I don't tell God, you showed me this vision and I feel so abused. I'm not here to cater to the tender feelings of people. I'm here to let you know in no uncertain terms that even though I may be seeing these things live now, we will all be seeing them when they come out into the open in the future. So boys are raping girls out there. And the Lord says they're using a combination of seduction where they really work on the girls and they make it, they court the girls properly. They get her presents, Valentine's car cards and candy and everything else to really make it seem that they're a legitimate boyfriend. But basically a lot of these boys, they identify a girl, especially a girl who has not had any sexual contact and they target her with precision. They work out various plans with their friends. And I will let you know that a lot of the friends who assist in the first time rapes of young women are female. Some of these girls were raped themselves in this fashion. And so they think if it could happen to me, it can happen to Wendy and they go along with the plan. But a lot of them are just girls who think it's fun that this girl will be put in a compromising situation where she will later cave into sex or be caught in a compromising situation because she did not rightly gauge how much appropriate space, how much appropriate, let's go and be alone here, let's go and park in my car here, how much of that was appropriate until she gets caught in a situation where it's now mind over matter. If the girl doesn't mind, then it doesn't matter to the boy. The Lord says that they use, use a lot of nonstop mental pressure on these girls. If you loved me, you would sleep with me. If you really cared about taking this relationship and for us to last longer, then we would do something serious that proves we, we really love each other. That kind of thing is what they do until the girls cave in. Or sometimes it is simply physical pressure whereby the male is stronger than the female and they can take what they want and then say to her, but you wanted it. Girls are shamed into silence and they often agree to continue this type of sexual abuse because they think that's how relationships are supposed to be. They are put under endless pressure to do things that they are not comfortable with. They are victims of narcissistic manipulation and lies. So this is a man telling you or a young man telling you that if you really cared, he's bought you all this candy. He's brought you all these flowers. He always picks you up after practice um, or after sports and he takes you home. And now just because he wants to touch you a little here and just because he wants to show you his love, this is how males will tell you that they want to truly demonstrate. Even though this is part of the male psyche, again, I will never cease to say that this is only appropriate in a male, female, legitimized marriage situation. And so the girls are shamed into silence and they agree. And they, after it happens the first few times, they continue because now they think, well, they don't actually think I'm with my abuser. I'm with my narcissistic manipulator. They think, oh no, I'm with my boyfriend. He loves me. This is why when adults finally find out what's going on and try to give the girl counseling, she's screaming at the adults, you don't know him because she's been cooked in the head 
by what by the groundwork that the boy laid in the beginning. The Lord says that they use accusation when the girl tries to pull herself out of the situation and it continues in an endless cycle. When people try to bring the girls out of this, they will say, but he says he loves me. And many women who are familiar with um, emotional abuse, domestic abuse, know that this is what the abused say. And they're not saying it because deep down they believe that they are loved. They're saying it because they have been taught by their abuser that what the abuser is doing is love. If it sounds like I'm talking about a situation between a 35-year-old and a 33-year-old, I'm speaking about what children are doing in middle school and high school. But he says he loves me is the hook. And so the girl will keep coming back for more. These girls keep coming back for more abuse. And the Lord says that the boys who are doing this laugh with the other boys when these girls are not around. But the Lord says, I stand in the council of the idolatrous, meaning that when all the laughers are gathered, he, Jesus, is there gathering his evidence too. I hear the words. I see the deeds. I am the Lord. I will repay. These deeds will not go unpunished. Prepare to bury these sons. Now, during this prophecy, I was just seeing this long procession of coffins open. So you know how that you would have a coffin and it is open, I guess, at the funeral for the viewing part. And then only afterwards it is closed. Well, I kept seeing this endless line of suns to the horizon, boys laying in their coffins prepared for burials. The next part, boys share naked and compromising photos of girls that they get under duress, deception, and other means. Girls do the same to boys. Boys and girls are naked and they do not mind being naked on their private pages on social media and in front of their significant others. They can have significant, they can have multiple significant others in a single year. Sexual relationships, not just friendships. And they expose their nakedness to each other in unsecured cell phone and computer messages without qualms. So the Lord is here talking about this practice that even is becoming the subject of documentaries now. Boys going, can you show me a naked picture? Can you send me a breast picture? Can you send me a picture of your backside? Can you send me a front picture? Can you send me a full picture of everything? And woe betide that girl that is stupid enough to send a picture of any part attached to her face. Before she can cough, that picture has gone out to his 10 best friends who share it with their 12 best friends, who share it even with their older brothers in college because one of the greatest currencies of the young modern generation is the naked woman. These children are so immoral and they're so hardened that they are not even like their fathers who were content to masturbate to a hidden picture of a strange woman in a magazine. These children aren't interested in naked celebrities and they aren't interested in whoever these naked playboy bunnies are. These children want to see the girls they go to school with because these children are incredibly wicked. If you don't know why they want naked pictures of their schoolmates is because when you see your schoolmate naked and then you see her at school with clothes on, there is endless levity in mocking her and saying, Jill, I almost didn't recognize you with your bra on. These children are, help me, Lord, sadomasochistic. They are sick in the head. They get off on taunting one another, mocking one another, mentally destroying and breaking down each other. And God is saying that he is not going to let this type of sociopathic behavior that can do this to someone at school. And then you get home and your mom is like, how was school today, John? And he's like, pretty good, mom. I think I'm going to make the team. And you have no idea that it's a little demon in practice smiling at you, which is why when complaints come to the parents, as we will discuss, the parents swear up and down that it's not possible that their little male angel or their little female angel has done this. But God says, that the time of the burial of the gods and goddesses has come. And he's talking about these children. 
So the boys get these pictures and he says that the girls get these pictures too. Girls do catfish boys. They tell him, you know, I just think you look so muscular and can I get a picture in your, in your jock strap and can I get a picture in this and that? And then they laugh and they compare the boys sexual privates to other pictures. And they also find ways to demean and mock him. And the Lord says that basically these children, they don't have any valuation of nakedness. They don't actually know what the value of nakedness is. They don't know that God actually affords nakedness a, a special privilege and a special place. And they just flash it anywhere. And he says that in a single year, these children are having sex with multiple people that they call their significant other. So as a parent, you may not know that the person your daughter introduced you to in January, she was done with him in two weeks and moved on to his best friend. And then by March, she's been through six more people and she's just getting started. The boys have a target market to sleep with. They have a target number to sleep with every year. And so do some females. And the Lord says that they reveal their nakedness to each other. And these pictures are being secured, are being shared on WhatsApp. They're being shared on Instagram, in the private DMs. They're being shared on all different types of social media and on cell phones and on their computers, Facebook, and they have no shame. And he says the multiplying of naked images of young people can reach an unbelievable peak in a single year. And here's why young children are sharing images of their nudity in their personal circle to multiple partners. So a girl may want to send a naked picture to her married boyfriend, but then she will take six and send them all to Jessica that she thinks is her BFF. F F F which one is the hottest and Jen Jennifer will tell her, well, number three, go with number three. But here's the thing. There are six naked pictures of girl one on the phone of girl two and girl two has a brother that likes to steal her cell phone and use maybe this and that app. And he will see them sneak them off to himself and then delete the evidence that he texted himself those pictures and then off go pictures shared in confidence between girl one and girl two into the boyosphere. There is an endless number of people's daughters on porn sites. This is how some of these girls get kidnapped. Their images make it into the hands of traffickers and it basically takes a trafficker five to 10 minutes with good software to find out the IP address of where the original picture came from. And he can call it in and say, I think we got a looker. These are children. And so they're not thinking about all that. In their personal circle, they share their images to multiple partners, but these pictures don't only circulate within the circle of trust. They pass on like wildfire to others. This nakedness is not referring to the millions of porn images that young people have access to and share in addition to making themselves homemade porn stars. Hear the indictment of the Lord against these children who are innocent in your eyes. Hear the words of the Lord. I'm going to try and do something about the lighting. Just a moment, please. So as I was saying, these pictures don't only circulate in the personal circle. In fact, if you're the parent of a young child or even a teen, think of how many times in your history of parenting your child, your child has come to you hurt and told you that someone that they thought was a trusted friend, somebody that they thought really loved them, has hurt them in some material way by betraying their trust, by exposing a secret or exposing some kind of embarrass embarrassing personal thing that your child had and shared with a friend because that's what intimacy is. Intimacy is the willingness to be vulnerable to another in the expectation that they will keep your secret. But the young people today are not faithful. First of all, young people are not, they're not known for making the best decisions. They're not known for being entirely unselfish. Children are incredibly selfish, actually. They need to be taught selflessness. It's not something that they come with. And so this hurt naturally occurs among children. But now the Lord is showing that this generation is so untrustworthy, that these pictures are actually currency. The children themselves don't even have the wisdom to know 
that they should not be sharing their nakedness in the environment where adults are actively seeking child flesh to rape, to sleep with, to sodomize, to traffic in, to sell to Yugoslavia and you will never come home again. They're not even thinking of this. They're just thinking about how um, um, exciting it is and how the guy will see it and go like, oh, you'll be on my mind all week. And then she feels like a diva and a queen and yet there's, there's no common sense. And then instill of instilling these values in the children, you will find society talking about how devastating it was for the victim. And I can't imagine how vulnerable you feel. How about a good dose of reality called don't take off your clothes and put it on the internet because you know what the internet is. Why don't we approach these things that are so widespread now. Why are we not approaching these issues with that kind of advice? So suicide is rampant among the young, the Lord was telling me. The Lord said the most prevalent emotions these children feel, and he's just talking about young people in general, are shame, pride, fear, loneliness, bitterness, hatred, a spirit of competition, low self-esteem, self-hate, and self-harm. He said the spirit of death is running rampant among them, taking every opportunity to cut them down. The, do the doors of their souls are wide open, and for many of them, there is no one protecting them, even from a young age. This is also wickedness but it is happening every day. So I spoke in the previous video and we're looking at the prevalent emotions God says that young people are dealing with. They're dealing with shame. They're dealing with pride and fear. Now with pride, you can immediately look to that lifestyle that we know, the alternative lifestyle. There's a, young, a lot of young people jumping onto that lifestyle that don't even struggle with the feelings in real life. It is simply a movement to them. The bright colors, the fact that it appears to be a very closely knit community, the fact that the government is backing it up 2 billion percent. There's so much money and public, pub, publicity and advertising being pumped into this and it's just a wave, it's just a movement. So parents are just waking up and their child that has been normal just telling them I'm a Z, Zoo, Z, G, T, and my, my pronoun is, I cannot even say. I live in New York where we have, I think, 32 genders and I cannot even tell you what they are besides the normal ones, which are, I think, bi and gay and lesbian and, and trans, those ones. But the other, oh, and, and binary and non-binary and... It is just how it is. And so pride is one of them. And when a young person is full of pride, you cannot speak to this person. You, uh, a proud person cannot see reason. A proud person, a proud person, always think of a proud person as a cup. This is a person who is full and therefore no new information can pour in. All new information will meet that cap and be wasted on the ground. So that's pride. And then the Lord says they're dealing with shame. These children are ashamed of their bodies. They're ashamed of the fact that I don't know if anyone is telling them that little ducklings do not become full grown ducks overnight, that there is a parabolic arc there called your growth spurt. And as you go through it, you will go through awkwardness as your body is taking up the necessary hormonal changes and necessary growth spurts. Some things may be shorter, some things may be flatter, some things may get too full, some things may just look out of whack. It is the process of being made. As children, you go to school and you learn how to draw and you see the mess you made. You did not know how to draw in the lines, but eventually some of you, you became very good at it. And yet young people are in a high pressure culture that is telling them you need to look like this and you need to look like that. And because genetically and naturally it's not possible, the culture has shifted its stance and it's now telling you that you can just be 24 pounds and it's okay. You can be six feet tall and you can just be 63 pounds and it's perfectly okay. And even if every bone that you have is sticking out, we accept it because we want you to feel accepted. And so these dangerous mindsets are now what are surrounding people's children. 
Because now everything is shaming, is body shaming, eyelash shaming, tongue shaming, thought shaming, skin shaming. There's so, everything now is so off limits. It's so PC that the mantra has changed from healthy advice giving and from also too much evil pressure to conform to a certain standard. That now these children are being told it doesn't matter how much weight you gain, okay? Just look at such a such and such a, a performer and look at this other person and her awesome career. You can carry around 350 pounds and that's okay. And then the next thing that comes is what? Thoughts and prayers and hearts for Jessica. After we find out that coronary disease does not agree with that kind of societal mindset. Self-hate. These children are committing suicide because they hate themselves. They are self-harming. This also includes demonic activity. Demonic activity is under rooting all of this from shame to pride to fear. There's, there's a reason that we talk about a spirit of fear. Fear doesn't just drop out of the sky. It is a literal personage that comes upon a person and looms on people. And God said, because of this environment, death is picking off these children. Boys drug girls to rape them. Drugs are used as a means to obtain sex. Drugs are used as a means to control and to punish. Drugs are used as a way to get virgins. Drugs are used as a way to bring down those who think they are better than everyone else. Drugs are planted, drugs are administered, drugs are used as a weapon and as an escape. And so again, God is talking about young males, their habit of putting drugs in the drinks of young women. And because there are gay boys now putting drugs in the drinks of young men for the purpose of rape, drugs are being used as the easy way to get sex because who needs to bother with talking to someone and getting them to fall in love with you and marrying them and getting them to trust you? Even in the world where people are committing fornication, who needs to go through all that hard work of talking to a person and actually getting her to like you until she finally decides to see you and then the two of you make the mutual discussion to have sex? Drug cuts, drugs cut that cuts that lead time to nothing. Drugs are used to control and to punish. This is getting people addicted to drugs and then withholding the drugs to see them twitch. To secure virgins, this is definitely a process that I will speak about, raping girls for the first time by sequestering them, getting them into compromising situations, putting substances in what they're drinking or eating, and then taking their virginity. Drugs are also used as a humbling measure to bring people down. So people are being drugged and then gang raped and then they'll say, yeah, we'll see how you, how, how you go now, Miss Homecoming Queen. Let's see how it feels now that the whole football team has had you. So drugs are being used to bring people down a notch. The Lord says that these kids are planting drugs on one another and then calling the cops. Yeah, I think that so-and-so has drugs in his locker and the cops never stop to think, I wonder how you know who exactly has the drugs. Drugs are being given and received and they're used as a way for these children to escape. Children have access to hard drugs and they often rape and abuse their peers through the use of drugs and alcohol. And then God told me about something and I heard it from him. It is called the running train. A running train is where boys isolate girls. It can be one girl or a few girls. It can be at a big party where this happens, or it can be at a smaller and private location, such as one child's home. And it can be under the pretense of having a private party or just getting together. The girls will be isolated. They will be enticed to come to this place. They will be drugged. And then boys will line up one after the other and have sex with this girl without a break. So it's one boy on top of the girl until he finishes. And then he comes out and the next boy goes in on the girl until he finishes. And the boys are standing in a line. And apparently the attraction of this is not only to watch the live rape, but knowing you'll be next. It is often recorded and the footage is shared far and wide as a mark of accomplishment and victory. 
When people are asked about this, nobody will confess it due to fear because these children actually know that this is criminal activity. Knowing that it is criminal activity is part of the excitement of it, knowing that they should not be doing it. But then once the adults get involved and begin asking and they begin to see the sheriff's deputies showing up and going, we're here about this girl and we're hearing about this boy. And then when they see the cop cars, that's when it looks real because there's nothing like the threat of jail to help young people get their priorities in order. And so they will not talk about it. Nobody confesses due to fear. Nobody confesses due to threats because the perpetrators are sometimes very popular boys with rich parents who can make bad things happen to those who snitch. Also peer pressure. They have this boys club, don't snitch rule. And so this activity, the Lord says, has become something of a mythical uniform, unicorn among young people. It happened, but it didn't happen. The running train. And I saw a vision of three boys who got three girls over to a house telling them, just come over. A couple of us want to hang out. And they were very nice and friendly, but they had already drugged the punch and that they gave the girls and they kept giving them this spiked punch until the girls passed out. And these were all varsity letter girls, so cheerleading girls or girls who run track, girls who have earned their place in the popular squad at school. But one of these girls was too young. She looked about 15 years old only. And they put the girls in different bedrooms of this house, and then they lined up to sleep with the girl. So the boys would sleep with the girl and then recover and then go to enjoy the girl in room three and then the girl in room two or room one. And there were about 10 boys who spent the night rotating among these girls, having sex with them whenever they wanted. And not a single boy in this group refused to participate. And the Lord said to me, this is the running train. Girls will wake up very sore. They will wake up disoriented. They will wake up and be ashamed and devastated at what has happened to them. And the Lord said to me, what the girls of the world go through and the situation the girls of the world put themselves in. By the time most of them are women, they are world weary and they have been through so much and they can't even tell their own mothers what has happened to them. God said that what hardened criminals don't do what hardened criminals won't do. Today's children do that. Boys who commit crimes, yet their parents cover it up. And remember that I spoke and I said that a lot of the time in this rape, even girls will participate in saying, oh, just a few of us are getting together. Why don't you come? And they will, they will get one girl. They will get perhaps one girl that a boy in the group likes and has been talking to the girl and the girl has been saying no. And so they've decided to teach her a lesson. And so the popular kids will invite her not knowing that that boy will be there and he will get the honor of raping her first before the rest join in. Boys who commit crimes and yet their parents use money, influence, power, family ties, business connections, donations, threats, private property, and they call in favors to make sure that their sons will not pay a penalty for their sins. Some of these boys even do things where people end up dead, but their parents cover it up. So as the Lord was talking to me during this time where he's talking about these boys with parents that have money and influence, I was seeing these boys that wear these, you know, these knitted sweaters, sweaters that look like they're a thousand percent wool and things like that. You know, the sweaters that have the little knitting here and then the V here, or sometimes they wear um, the sweater over the shoulder, just money. God was revealing to me and we'll be talking about this in future prophecies, I will be talking about it, that there, there is money in this country that many people are confused about. The Lord was sharing with me, you know, Celestial, this fixation that people have with the celebrities, thinking that the celebrities are the upper tier of money in this nation. The Lord said to me that there is money in this nation that is faceless. He said the money is faceless and it's old. And before I could ask, what do you mean by that? Yeah, he was telling me there are people in this nation that are so insanely rich that they have never been seen before. He said that these people can come out to Walmart in shorts and a t-shirt they, if they wanted with their face out and no one would think anything of it because no one has ever seen them as part of America's elite rich 
people are very confused. They think that these actors in Hollywood and these people everywhere are the height of money. It's them. These people are perhaps sometimes puppets. Sometimes they are victims. There is money in this nation that even the money in this nation doesn't know exists. That's how private these people are. God says that they and their families have never been photographed. They have never been seen. And if they got into an elevator with you one day just for kicks, you would never know who they are. They are that private. And their children have the world at their feet. Their children can commit murder. And that murder will go away because the police commissioner knows better than to try and prosecute it. So God is saying, and it's not only these children, please understand that even ordinary normal children are doing this. I just thought that I would bring that up because that's something he was revealing. He said, um, they defend their little angels. These are the parents. They won't hear a word against them. So under this covering, girls can have abortion and they can even commit live sex acts, such as I, I was mentioning about people, children who live stream sex. It says they can commit live stream acts, sex acts, but even if the whole town tells their mother the truth, if the daughter says, mom, I would never do that, then the mother is incapable of further thought. The Lord says the mom will never ask another question, take another action, or investigate the matter any further to find out if her daughter is telling the truth. They do not believe that their children are capable of anything other than being good, but God will expose these children. There was a vision that went with this. I did not write it down. I just felt that it will be something that I will cover in the video. I saw a live vision of a very voluptuous young woman. She had to be about 18 or 19 years old. She had been running a live sex cam. She was lying on her bed. God showed me the entire scene. She was lying on her bed and she had a very powerful camera, live camera at the foot of her bed and her legs were open towards the camera and she had been taking care of herself using various toys and things like that. And she was live streaming to an audience that was jam packed on one of these selling sex live rooms. So she was doing this and, um, she died. She absolutely died. She either had a heart attack, something struck her in that bedroom and she died on camera. So this is how it went in the previous prophecy. I said that the Lord said only after the funeral will some parents actually find out who their daughters were in the case of whoever this unfortunate person's parents were. She was live streaming and some of the boys from her school had paid because you know, when you enter these chat rooms, you can call yourself Bugs Bunny 44, um, you know, Elmer 22, Big Bird 3. You don't have to use your real name. So there were boys from her school that used to watch her. And when she died on camera, People were watching for a while and wondering what happened to the action. And they had been sending um, what looked like not only hearts, but money. So I was seeing the dollar symbol. I don't know if you press a button or something like they do on YouTube. When you want to thank a YouTuber, then you press thanks and then you can give them $5 or thank $10 as they live stream. But I was seeing dollar symbols, little gold cartoony do dollar symbols and clap symbols and hearts. And people had been applauding this girl as she was doing this. And then the Lord struck her and she died live on camera, just like that with her arms, with her hands between her legs, just dead. And then people were wondering what happened to the action and why was nothing happening. And then eventually one of the boys thought, I think something is wrong. And he came out of the live chat and he called this girl's friend in real life. So he called her in real life and said, yo, you know, your girl, I don't think all is well with her. I don't know how you're going to handle it. Don't use my name, but she don't look too good. She's upstairs in her bedroom. And he hung up. And then this girl was now faced with a dilemma. What is she going to do? And I'm in the room and I'm seeing all this at the same time. I'm seeing the phone call. I'm seeing the dead girl. I'm seeing the live stream. It's still going. People are complaining. Hey, wrap it up. I paid for this because you have to pay money to enter these rooms and the more explicit the act you're not paying 20 and 50 dollars you're paying hundreds of dollars to get in on that kind of live stream and basically it's taking place in a suburban american home i hope that every viewer in every country that is foreign is listening to the words that i'm saying so that when you are viewing your children, you watch your teens coming to the dinner table after this, you won't be watching them with this sleepy, mopey ice cream eyes. 
but you will be realizing that you are in the midst of a generation of vipers and that you could have vipers in your house and be covering for that viper until the day I said that when the sword is done with the elites and the rich, the sword will come for Samantha and Ugwe, and you will not stand before God and stop him. So this girl, eventually, she called and she said, Mr. and Mrs. So-and-so, um, hi, is Jennifer home or is so-and-so home? And they said, well, yeah, I think she's upstairs in her room. And they're like, ah, yeah, you know, it's so funny. I've been trying to call her and everything. And then the girl felt guilty and she said, I think something has happened to her. I'm very worried about her. Please go upstairs. And then I see the father, the father, they come up the stairs. So they're coming up the stairs. I'm not seeing them come up the stairs. But then all of a sudden the door bursts in and I saw the heartbreak that many parents will experience in the end times. I have never seen a father use his shoulder to break in a door, walk in, see the scene of his older daughter naked in that position and spiral and spin out of the room. The man basically burst into the room, saw what was on the bed, turned and went, oh God, and went outside. It was the mother who had to go to the bed. It was the mother who had to check the pulse. It was the mother who had to find out that her daughter was dead. Her father had no heart to even observe the nakedness of his adult daughter and see her in that position and see it going out live because everybody knows that men are protective over female nakedness, their child's and their significant other, wife, mother. So that is what I saw. Live streaming sex act and if the girl denies it, even if the whole town is telling the mother the truth, the mother will say it's not true. That is the vision the Lord saw. So, gave me, I just did not want to write it on the blog. The next step, they are genocidal. I had a vision of a girl, God did it in a cartoon form because it was graphic, a girl who was just standing and she was holding a crooked wire hanger and the hanger just had blood running down it. So it's not even as if the hanger had been used. And this is the universal symbol of the abortion. This was the first implement before uh, people made it fancy and comfortable so that it's almost like you're taking a spa day. The hanger is what they always use to symbolize this. She was holding a hanger that had been unfolded and the hanger was just creating blood by itself and the girl was grinning. And God says they are genocidal they have lost the ability to value life at all. They are false believers. I saw a, v a vision of a naked Christian girl sitting on top of a boy having sex in the girl's bedroom while the parents were not home. Both of them, the boy and the girl who was on top of him, had crosses on their necks. They are adulterers. These children can destroy marriage. They focus on a married man and they get him to become corrupted by patient application of their exposed young flesh until he caves in. I already explained a personal experience about this in the first video, something that I saw and heard very young girls talking about. And so married men, what I will say to you is, You've come into the covenant of marriage and you're doing well and you and your wife are fine. If you're married in your house and you don't actually know that both women your age, women younger than you, and people who are not women at all are carrying Delilah and Jezebel in them and they are being marshaled as a great army, even married women in your circle, your friends' wives, some of them, are looking at you and when Satan enters them as he entered Judas, it will be those women who will cause you to fall in an unprepared moment. So let take caution to yourself because Jesus, Jesus is writing it all down and getting ready to repay. The Lord says that these girls simply know how to expose their young flesh and prepare themselves and package themselves toward marriage, married men. And he said that they don't even know how sacred marriage is. They're just doing it for kicks, for fun. And I saw a vision of a young girl in these schools where they wear uniforms. So it was clearly a young female student. And she came into the adults' ba bathroom. Many of these schools have 
they now have blended bathrooms. So it wouldn't be weird to see a female going into a, a male female staff bathroom, but this bathroom was for adults, staff. But this girl slipped, slipped in and she was a girl at a Christian school. The man that she accosted in, a bathroom, in the bathroom was a man that she had had her eye on for a while. This man was not a Christian, but he was working at a Christian school because Christian schools will do that. A teacher is a teacher. And this girl easily seduced this man and took him into the bathroom stall. She had sex with him and then she came out and the Lord was showing me that this girl was not interested in any relationship with this man. She simply wanted to win a bet with her friend. She finished with the man and she walked out triumphant while the man was sitting shocked and terrified in the bathroom because he was thinking of losing his job. And God was showing me this is a terrible situation on both sides because nobody's supposed to be sleeping with children. He said the situation is ripe for blackmail and this type of thing happens all the time. But he says if they had been caught, the child will cry wolf. But the truth is she is a seductress. He says the man will plead no contest, meaning that the man doesn't have a leg to stand on because the law says a child is a child. But God says that even if this man is sacrificed to the mob, how dare he, my little girl? The truth is God says the root of it is that the girl has a wench and prostitute spirit in her. To those of you who own a KJV, this is called the spirit of whoredoms and is it at work even in grown folk today. This is what they have, the spirit of whoredoms. This is who these girls really are. Jezebel's, Delilah's, whores. Their souls are calloused. These are the calloused branches that will go to the fire. I spoke of calloused in the first video. It means something that is hardened. You can't smooth it. You can't bend it. You can't put sheer butter in it and soften it. It is hardened. Children rug, run drug and other business empires without their parents' consent or knowledge. And I had a vision of a boy who had been running his own books for several years. All of the stuff he was doing was illegal activities and his parents knew nothing about it. He was self-sufficient financially, but he wasn't yet 21 years old. He was not yet a major who's able to actually trade on the major markets without his cons parents' consent or something like that. And so I saw this boy patiently keeping track of his own books until that time says children steal their parents' drugs and they sell them to addict other children at school. Children are a snare to others. Children steal the Percocet and the Vicodin and Qualudes. And in fact, I am aware that these are outdated names because I'm sure there's ritzy new drugs that the American parenthood are taking. And you don't know that the reason you keep having to refill faster is because the children are stealing up to half the bottle putting in dummy pills sometimes, and then taking the real thing to school and sharing it with their friends. The Lord says they have gotten their best friend addicted and then the friend killed himself from drugs. And then the one who got him addicted stays quiet and guilty about it. This is when, when their friends die, then they show up and they're crying and you know they light all those candles. A lot of the people who gather to cry at those little candle vigils, they're not crying because somebody died, they're crying because they feel like trash what they said to the person while they were alive. Children torture other children socially at school, and then they cry when the tortured one kills themselves. They light candles and memorials for those that they killed, killed with their words, with emotional torture, by socially ostracizing them, by mocking them, by incessantly being cruel to them and taunting them. Six, by rejection and sometimes by causing them actual physical harm. These children have no respect for life. They are socially unaware and they are even shocked when their wicked and thoughtless actions end up with somebody actually dying. They are full of wickedness and yet most of them haven't even reached the edge of adulthood at which point their twisted psychological behavior will be able to run free in mature adult society. I will cut them off before that time comes. The Lord says that these children are violent and socialized Nazis, that they are so radicalized and they believe in ideals that their parents never ever believed in, that these children very much follow a propaganda sheet. And you only have to look at the government to realize where your children, the tune 
that many children today are marching to, it's being played by the governments. And so the Lord says that parents and children have greatly departed from my law. If they have not departed in full, they compromise the word of God to where it is no earthly good. And this is many parents who cannot minister the truth in love to their children that are going astray. Your child wakes up and says that they, they don't, at, at five years old, apparently in America, um, children can wake up and decide that, oh no, I'm not a girl, I'm a boy. And the parents will be like, you smart and sharp, wise fount of wisdom. Of course you're not what you are. You just look that way, but we're going to assist you in the repackaging process because at five years old, what we have learned is that you have a handle on things and you can make this type of mature decision. So we'll just get you on those puberty blockers and we'll be out of your way. Again, I spoke of the fact that genetic defects will be seen. Grandchildren will become fewer. People who have been committing many abortions, they will find themselves sterile. God will not allow them to have. And again, I repeat the words of the Lord. The next generation inherits nothing. Perhaps now it is easier to understand why. This is Celestial with the Master's voice. May the Lord bless you and keep you until I see you again. Goodbye.